Good morning. Glad to welcome you to our worship service this morning and glad to welcome all our visitors and our guests and all those who are watching online with us today. If you are online, I'll remind you we will be celebrating Holy Communion later in this worship and we invite you to uh, take communion there in your home as we do that here. Um, today, the first thing we need to do is to install our church council. Um, we've had several weeks of inclement weather, and so we're a little bit late in doing this, but um, we're going to do that this morning. And so, let me get my thing here. Following people have been elected to positions of leadership, and we give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. And as I call your name, if you just gather on the steps here behind me, Kathy Chartier, Julie Crooks, Jim Epting, Carol Lorick, Bill Newmeyer, Preston Smith, Steve Summer, Carol Volovson, and Linda Wells. <laughs> Cinderella. Cinderella. <laughs> I'm looking at my list and Cinderella isn't on here. I <laughs> A reading from First Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. 
And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in serving that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you've been elected? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of God. Amen. Thank you all very much. <laughs> got your shoe? You got, got your shoe. Good. <laughs> Pastor Amanda. Keep your shoes on. I'm keeping my shoes on. <laughs> They're tied tight. <laughs> um, a few announcements that I have. Um, we are still looking for volunteers to help in the nursery and um, to help with Sunday school for the kiddos. And also, if you um, would like to learn how to operate our cameras and all of that, we're looking for more volunteers to be on the camera crew. Um, all of those are listed on the backside of your bulletin. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can sign up or see me for more information. Also, we um, continue our book study on Sunday afternoons with Accidental Saints for this week and next week. But we have a new book study that's coming up, and it's going to be all about baptism. So many times, um, congregations will have people preparing for baptism during Lent and um, and then have those celebrations at Easter, and so we thought it might be good to, to dig into that. So the book is Flowing Water, Uncommon Birth, Christian Baptism in a Post-Christian Culture. Um, so I'm excited to dig into that with folks. So all are welcome, and it's online, so you can invite anybody from anywhere that you want to. As far as youth group goes, we have our K-5 through five youth group that's going to meet on February 13th from 4 to 5.30. Um, so that's next week, and we'll be talking about First Communion and God's love and all of those wonderful things. So all kindergartners through fifth graders are welcome to join us, and you can bring friends too if you want. Our fifth grade through 12th grade youth group is going to meet Monday, tomorrow on February 7th from 7 to 8.30. And my last announcement, maybe when you came in, you saw this mountain of canned food next to the wall, and we had an anonymous donor bring a whole bunch of stuff um, for our uh, canned food drive for the soup herbal, and I got to thinking, I, I'm going to get real tired of counting. Um, that's a lot, so we're just going to count piles this time. Um, so we have at least six good piles out there. Um, and everybody wins when we get to feed people that are hungry in our area. So I'm going to invite you to, um, if you would like, on your way um, out after worship service, um, grab a few cans and head over to the blessing box, and we'll start stocking the blessing box with those. So you're invited to help us do that. And those are all of my announcements. Pastor Gary, do you have anything else? Yeah, well, I just thought when those came in and they weren't assigned to a team, you were going to put a Packers sign on them. I did think about that. So maybe everything on the, on the cart is for the Packers. 
And then we have the, the other boxes. Does that sound right? You can do that, yes. Okay, all right. So the backers won. Yay! <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> you don't know what they might do yet. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Y'all can always surprise me, and you most certainly do all the time. So, well, those are all our announcements for yeah. the day. I might invite you to stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundance, abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away. And we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. <laughs> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before your, you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Be seated, and would the children please come forward? Good morning, and let's say hey to everybody out there in camera land. We're glad y'all are with us too. So I wanted to show you, I got this little piece of cardboard so I could hold all three of these things at one time. You see what I have on here? I have a paper clip and a washer and a nut like you might put on a bolt, right? Okay. I have learned this week that I have a magic power. 
What, what, what is it? I can, I'm going I'm to start with the paper clip because it's the lightest thing on this page. But I can hold my hand over it and it will just jump up to my hand. Do you think I can do that? Yes. Well, watch. Okay. I'm, getting, I'm trying. <coughs> what? What? It did it. <laughs> All right. Now let's try the, let's try the washer. You think so? Yeah. You think that might be what this is? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a magnet. I was hiding it in my hand. Uh, oh, and I'm. <laughs> you're not really. I'm magic. not really magic. No. You just made that to think that I, you were magic. That's right. I sure did. I was hiding it right behind those fingers. See how I had it right here? And it just jumps right up, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. But magnets are really kind of cool, aren't they? And when these things are metal, and when a magnet gets near something metal, it just jumps right up to it. It attracts it. That's what that's called, attraction. You were it, and that's why you were holding it like this. That's right. That's exactly right. And so the magnet attracts metal and pulls it up to it. And so I wanted to talk to you about that because this is kind of a thing that science does. But in our gospel reading, we're going to hear in just a little bit it that, gonna that I'm going to say, it talks about Jesus. And he went by and he found some people fishing. What? I know you. I saw you. And so, see, you made it jump up. Let me yeah. do it. Okay, just put them down, and it'll sh shoot right up. Look at there. All right, let me hold it. So, no, what we're talking about is how the magnet attracts these things, and Jesus, y'all, Jordan, Jesus went by and found these guys and said, you come follow me. And you know what? Just like this magnet attracts the stuff, they decided they were attracted to Jesus. And they, they went to Jesus and they followed Jesus wherever he went. Just like the magnet. Watch it. It's attracted to the magnet. And then it follows the magnet wherever it goes. Right? Well, those guys followed Jesus that same way. And so the message for us today is that Jesus calls us to follow him too. And we should... Draw close to Jesus, just like these things drew to the magnet. I saw that when, when I was getting ready for the program. Mm -hmm, this was up on the bench, right, wait, waiting for me to come out here and show you all this. That's right. But the point is that we should follow Jesus, just like Peter and James and John did. We are attracted to Jesus, and we should always follow him. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for calling us and help us always to follow you. Amen. All right, go in peace and serve the Lord. Yeah, it was short. <laughs>
and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and to stop their ears, and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate. Until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast in the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Two city slickers had gone with their families to a famous lakeside resort. On the first day, while the kids were swimming and hiking and playing games, the two men decided to rent a boat and some fishing gear for a quiet afternoon on the lake. They had never fished much before, but they enjoyed the sun and the water and the breeze, and pretty soon they started to catch some fish. It wasn't long before, even in their inexperience, they realized that they had found a great spot for fishing. As the sun started to go down, one man said to the other, You better mark this place so that we can find it again. Then they made their way back to the dock and turned in all their equipment and were walking back to the cabin when the first man asked, Did you mark the place? You bet, the second one replied, and we shouldn't have any trouble at all. I carved an X on the side of the boat right over the good spot. (laughs) 
Well, there are all sorts of fishing stories, but one of the most fascinating begins with our gospel reading today. We know the story, particularly the part where Jesus tells some fishermen to let down their nets one more time after a fruitless night of fishing. Before we get to that part, however, we need to remember that as Jesus preached on the shore, the crowd drew closer and closer and closer to him until there was no place left to go. I think that's what happens when you hear the authentic word of God. When you hear of God's overwhelming love and amazing grace, you can't help but draw nearer and nearer. But back to our story. Peter and the others probably couldn't believe their ears. Here they were, professional fishermen, and they must have thought Jesus was a lunatic, this preacher who was trying to tell them how to fish. But they did it, and they caught so many fish, their nets began to tear. And then Jesus told them that from then on they would fish for people. And the scripture closes by saying that they brought their boats to shore and left everything, including the fish, and followed Jesus. Now, I think there are some significant things I ought to point out in this simple story because things aren't quite as simple as they seem. First, I think it's important to note that Simon and Andrew and James and John really didn't seem to be paying any attention to Jesus in the beginning of the story. They were working. They were minding their own business and not too worried about this preacher down the beach or about getting any of what he had to offer. They were washing their nets. And that's the second thing to notice. Not only were they tired and ready to go home, but they were just about through with their chores. And even more, Simon knew if he let down his nets, he'd have to wash them all over again. But again, there must have been something special about Jesus. Because when Jesus called, Simon answered. And that brings us to the third important detail They had fished all night, and their nets were empty. How often is that the case in our lives? How often does it seem that despite our best efforts, we end up with nothing? We work and work toward things that seem to elude us. We look for love. We strive for security and significance in life. We crave companionship. We ache for accomplishment. We hunger for hope. So many deep needs, important needs, echo inside our hollow hearts. And yet so often when we let down our nets to fish for them, our nets come back empty. And we look at Jesus who stands before us and we say, Master, we have worked all night, but we have caught nothing at all. What more can we do? Our nets are empty. Standing there on that lake shore, Simon knew all about empty nets. He knew the desperation, the worry, the pressures, the fears, the same feelings we feel. But there on that lake shore, he stood face to face with Jesus. And maybe Simon Peter had been listening just long enough to give this man who had been filling souls a chance to fill his nets as well. And so they tried. They went to deep water and let down the nets. And you know what happened. They caught an overabundance, so much that two boats were filled almost to the point of sinking. And the message is clear. Jesus fills our empty nets as well. He fills our lives with his love. He fills us with trust in his care and protection. He gives us purpose. 
He gives us hope. He fills us with the promise that he will be with us always and never forsake us. He gives our lives meaning. He fills us with goodness now and forever. And more. He fills our nets with an overabundance of his blessings, so much that, so that we can hardly contain it all. Oh, what a wonderful miracle Jesus does in our lives. Oh, how wonderful that it happens in us. Oh, what a wonderful story of giving, generous love. And oh, what a story of grace. Let down your nets and be filled with God's blessings. Let down your nets and be caught in God's love. Amen.
Let us share our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is worshipped through the Son, worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, you provide so many opportunities for us to celebrate. The creation you so lovingly made gives us the chance to honor the changing of the seasons and patterns of life. You take joy in seeing your people celebrate. We pray for all those that have recently welcomed a new year. Give them and all of us prosperity as we anxiously wait for the spring. Give us hope in all your promises, especially as we are reminded of death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. God of all people, you blessed the world with variety and diversity. Your creative acts make the earth vibrant and give humanity a multitude of gifts, talents, and abilities. As much of the world gathers to watch and cheer for the Olympics, help us also promote peace, understanding, mutual respect among the nations and people of the world. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, you walk alongside all of us throughout our lives. The Holy Spirit stirs within us and guides our steps. So many are in need of comfort at the loss of loved ones, hope in the face of the unthinkable, and patience to weather the pandemic. We pray for those on our minds and those in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, God of grace, you are always full of mercy and unconditional love. Your grace flows like a rushing river that all of your people are blessed by. Help us to continue listening for where you guide us to help others. Increase our capacity for grace, mercy, and love. Guide us to be the people of faith you need in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places to give praise and thanks to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and gave it, broke it and gave it, to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. By your spirit bless us this bread and cup that held and nourished by you we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son, Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.